How to be more decisive. Letting go of fears, doubts, and indecision. The truth is that decisiveness is our natural state. We have something called intuition, and we have our ability to tap into it. And we've always been intuitive, except what has happened, perhaps, is we have assimilated certain kinds of beliefs about ourselves and how reality works that causes us to doubt ourselves, to identify with fears, and to experience something we call indecision. Now, one of the goals of this journey is to release yourself from certain beliefs that you may have assimilated before that have impressed themselves on the subconscious mind to recreate in reality as indecisiveness. And what I want to share with you is some beliefs that I have assimilated, that I've created, that I have pulled from within via my inner voice connection. And these elements have been very useful for me when it comes to being more decisive. Now, when I look back at my journey, I make far more decisions today, and I'm able to do it from a place of flow easier and faster than ever before as a result of working with this kind of information in the video. What I noticed is that in earlier stages of my journey, I had a harder time making decisions because I had beliefs about myself and others and reality as a whole that were disempowering that I, as a result, experienced indecision. Now, as a result of being on the journey for extended periods of time, identifying and releasing certain disempowering beliefs that broke the connection with my inner voice, I also received empowering beliefs from my inner voice connection with infinite intelligence and the world within, as well as others that I interacted with along my journey, identified with those beliefs and became more decisive. And this is my contribution to you, to contribute to a higher level of decisiveness that already exists within you. If you look back at your life, think about times in your life where you knew the right answer. You had a gut feeling. You had an inner voice conversation. Hunches, inspirations showed up. And perhaps you didn't honor them, only to see the theater or the outer world experience play out as something that we call not in alignment or not being a desirable outcome. Now also think about a time in your life where you did not get the answers from anyone else, but you trusted your inner voice and you took action based on it or you made a decision based on it and it led you to a desirable outcome. Now this cause and effect reflection is important because this validates the important point, one of the empowering beliefs that I would like to share with you, that your natural state is decisiveness, and we are only clouded by disempowering beliefs that we have assimilated along our journey. Much of this journey in life is invested in identification of disempowering beliefs that externalize as outward experiences, mainly with people. Watch the last video I did on the topic of everyone is you pushed out, which is a concept that I learned way back in the days and then I further dimensionalized my understanding as a result of working with Neville's information. See, and I'll put a link in the description, people are us pushed out, as in they reveal our beliefs in our interactions with them. So they are a huge source of inspiration to identify where we are being indecisive. So when we interact with people, if we find ourselves being indecisive around people, then what we want to do is pause for a moment or reflect afterwards and ask ourselves, why were we being indecisive in that moment? What are the beliefs that we are associating perhaps to the interaction or the other person? Question these beliefs, evolve these beliefs, and affirm new empowering beliefs on our subconscious mind using one of the four modalities is really all we need. That's what I've been working with. Which I'll put a link in the description to the four modalities that I use. Evolve these beliefs within. And as a result, we begin to listen to ourselves, trust ourselves more, which is our natural state, via our inner voice or 
can call it intuition, hunches, inspirations, visions, synchronicities appear to a higher degree. And one of the things that happens as a result of identifying with too many disempowering beliefs that decisiveness is not a natural state, in other words, beliefs that break our ability to be decisive, is we become overly dependent on others to make decisions for us. These beliefs can make us overly dependent. It's healthy to be in a state of interdependence, as Stephen R. Covey put it, or as a mastermind in various shapes and forms. But when we go into this place of being dependent on others, from an unhealthy perspective, we then begin to identify with their beliefs, which may not be in alignment with the accurate decision that we need to make. Perhaps in your day-to-day -day environment, you notice that many others are indecisive. Always remember that environments is another way we create affirmations on our subconscious mind through vision boards, through statements that we can see on our desk when we're working. There's a reason why, because environments impress our subconscious mind. Now, this is the totality of environment. And if we experience environments where everyone around us is indecisive, then this has the ability to also impress our subconscious mind into believing that it's a normal way of living. One of the keys to tapping into your natural decisiveness is to observe where you find yourself stuck and make a decision to release from it by really reflecting back on the belief that you have about the various experience that you're having in the outer world where you feel stuck. There's a difference between feeling stuck and investing time to reflect. When we feel stuck and immobilized, we have a hard time making a decision. If we made a decision, which is in the world within, we move in a direction that is going to change the outer world circumstance around. The question is, how do you find this decision? Well, perhaps one of the reasons why we have a hard time coming up with this decision is because we are clouded with disempowering beliefs. So we reflect in conversations with ourselves or someone that we trust to identify these beliefs that we have that appear to cause us to feel stuck to whatever it is, circumstance, environment, job, whatever it is, outer world experience, what is causing this stuck? Now, one of the commitments that I've made in my life is to release myself from this experience of being stuck, no matter where it shows up. And it has served me really well, which has brought me to a place where I understand the reason why I felt stuck was because I identified with a certain belief. And the beliefs, there's so many different kinds of beliefs. It could be a different belief for me than it was for you. I identified this belief, I evolved the belief, I changed the belief, and then I found myself taking the right action, making the right decision, or I observe as the environment changed on its own. All of this is facilitated by your inner voice connection. You have a conversation with infinite intelligence. Watch the last two videos that I did on conversation with infinite intelligence, tuning into it via your inner voice and connecting with your inner voice. Your inner voice speaks of unconditional love and spirit of harmony. And unconditional love is not a stuck feeling. That is not in harmony with unconditional love. Unconditional love is giving and receiving as one. What you put out comes back to you in harmony to what you desire to create, consciously, and in harmony with all. Now, this is an evolution, and it's a journey. So that's why I said earlier that much of this journey in life is invested in identification of disempowering beliefs. See, Many of us might assume it's the other way around. We want to consume more information. This can perhaps lead to more confusion. Consuming more information can be beneficial, but then when we have a symptom where we feel overwhelmed by the information, then perhaps that's an indication from the inner voice and a decision factor that says consume less information. Figure out how to work with the information, how to apply the information. And as a result of applying the information, you'll notice that your beliefs evolve. And what you'll also uncover is disempowering beliefs that may have caused you to bias to consume more rather than applying.
Building a relationship with your inner voice helps to identify and release disempowering beliefs that cloud your decisiveness. Observe the information you are consuming and read the intent behind it. If it disempowers and does not feel right, okay, we're tuning into our inner voice, which a lot of times speaks through feelings. It is worth questioning via your inner voice conversation because to be more decisive, we develop a higher degree of inner voice connection. Simply put, a higher degree of self-esteem, self-confidence, self-love, self-appreciation, and confidence that you have the answers within. Upon reflection and upon releasing disempowering beliefs that denied this connection, you will find out that you always had the answers. They were always within you. So if information is always being presented to us by the outer world, we now have the awareness to question that information and ask, does this information feel right? Perhaps back in the days you didn't do it. And when you didn't do it, you instilled in yourself, a lot of times without knowing, beliefs that were not in alignment with facilitating the connection with your inner voice and infinite intelligence. It's okay if you are experiencing moments of indecision to take a step back from whatever the circumstance is and connect with your inner voice and reflect. After a while, what you'll notice is you'll identify the disempowering beliefs, you'll release them, and then you'll get better at being decisive in the moment to a higher degree. As mentioned, I make far more decisions each day than I've ever had to make in my entire life, and I'm able to maintain flow rather than being overwhelmed with the complexity and the volume of decisions that I have to make because I have a high degree of connection with my intuition and inner voice. I'm not overthinking things. My inner voice and my creative thinking, my mind, they work together. So learn to read between the lines and understand the beliefs that are being shared with you. And one of our goals is to choose and identify with beliefs that are in alignment that you are naturally decisive and release any programming that says you need the outer world to make decisions. Now, sometimes it's important to trust the outer world and receive information. And when you trust that information, it feels right for you. So when you get information from the outer world, run it through how you feel about it. Is it in alignment? And as a result of this, you'll have a healthy relationship. Stephen R. Covey called this interdependence. There's dependence, independence, and interdependence. Interdependence is being in spirit of harmony with all people, environment, circumstance, and information. This is also called the master mind. Watch the video I did on the master mind principle. This is where you can share, and we're always sharing beliefs Every single conversation, anything you read, any video you watch, anything, involves a exchange of beliefs. And a lot of times, these beliefs are being impressed on our subconscious mind without us knowing. And we want to have a higher degree of discernment. The truth is, we have it via how we feel, our hunches and our inspirations about what we are consuming. The conscious mind works in harmony with the subconscious mind while in flow. So everyone knows that I'm a huge fan of being in flow. And because actions and awareness is one, reality is seen as one. Challenges may appear, but we rise up to a higher degree of skill and we experience a greater sense of bliss and living with purpose. See, the reason why we choose flow is because our conscious mind, the thinking mind, leads us to higher levels of evolution, yes. However, there is a point where it can only rise to higher degrees of creation and evolution, we call this unconditional love, when it is in harmony with the subconscious and superconscious universal mind as one. See, we take things apart to put it back together, to understand, not to take things apart and leave it apart. We take things apart to gain knowledge, to understand. We put it back together to understand and gain experience as well. Experience. And this translates into wisdom. We also do this with the conscious, the subconscious, and the superconscious. 
we create these categories so that we can understand ourselves better. And then we put it all back together and live with them as one in flow. See, more so today than ever before, speed is the currency. You'll see this. Everyone wants everything fast, more so than ever before. However, we don't just want things fast. We also want a high degree of presence, which may seem contrarian. But when we see everything as one and contributing, we experience something called flow. And it's in those moments of flow where we are able to make a rapid decision. Real speed is found in rapid decision. Because in order to have the speed and the presence at the same time, we have to make rapid decisions. Rapid decision is found via intuition because it factors and evaluates different elements based on our experiences and to the degree of working with the subconscious mind ability we have while being in harmony with infinite intelligence otherwise known as the superconscious mind. So one of the things that we do is we pick and choose our opportunities wisely to find and live in flow and connect back to our decisive state of mind. Committing that, and watch the two videos that I did on flow, Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, which was the original book that I read about the subject, and Creating Success by Being in Flow, the one that I created, to put a link in the description. Now, when you choose to live in flow, all this stuff, even if it seems complex, will make a lot more sense to you because you're being. So we're talking about being more decisive rather than thinking about how to be more decisive. There's a difference. Now, to embrace this growth journey that we're on, because I always say this, the journey and destination are one. We value the journey and the destination. You're going to create the success and value the journey and the realization and the releases of disempowering belief and the identification with higher, more evolved beliefs and conversation with your inner voice and infinite intelligence. Enjoy it and see it all as one. And what we'll find is a higher degree of flow. Now, to apply this to a higher degree, we choose to create. When we say we're going to create something, in a way we are placing ourselves in uncertainty. Now, this is especially true when it comes to entrepreneurs. And I've worked with many entrepreneurs, and it's an area that I'm extremely passionate about. Entrepreneurship is a huge realm of uncertainty. But for those that have figured it out, that are very good at it, they thrive in the uncertainty. They find flow in the uncertainty because what they're really doing is evolving themselves to turn the uncertainty into certainty. And this is done by, and you'll see this, have conversations with people that have created a high level of success in entrepreneurship, and you'll find that they're very decisive and very intuitive. They have an ability to decide based on factors that may not make sense to anyone else, but it produces results because they trust their inner voice. So thus, some uncertainty is good and even healthy to expand your capability to bring forth your decisiveness. Flow is a form of uncertainty because what you're doing is you're experiencing challenge and you're rising up to a higher degree of skill. What I like to do as well is place myself in certain situations that are what I call extremely challenging or controlled chaos so I can reveal even more disempowering beliefs, evolve past them, and create from the perspective of actions, thoughts, emotions, being one, being one with the creation, thus also finding a higher degree of decisiveness. Because what am I really doing when it comes to overcoming challenges? I'm making decisions. And the decisions lead to certain thoughts, emotions, and actions. Uncertainty can polarize us to aspects in the present moment to reveal the cause of the polarization within so we can release it if necessary to reveal even more decisiveness. Watch the discussion I did on the Kabbalion. And we talk about the law of polarity, as in what we polarize to is otherwise known as what we react to or what we engage with. So the different elements in the five sensory world that we polarize to are either conscious polarization as we chose to identify with whatever that is emotionally, or we subconsciously did, and we didn't choose it. Now, if we didn't choose what we identify with in the outer world, 
it reveals aspects about ourselves which is usually expressed a lot when we place ourselves in situations where we have uncertainty. Now, it is in these moments of uncertainty where we find ourselves seemingly polarized to random chain of events or people, environment, circumstance for reasons that don't make sense to us unless we reflect, as mentioned earlier, the importance of reflection to understand why we are reacting to it. And watch the video I did on creating success by using the levels of consciousness and the emotional guidance scale. This will make a lot more sense if you go through that video. Now, these aspects that we polarize to reveal to us about ourselves and our beliefs that we have in our subconscious mind, and we have the ability to evolve past these beliefs. And if they are disempowering beliefs, we can evolve past them. If they're empowering beliefs, then you could leave them. Because it's really disempowering beliefs that break the clean, smooth decision-making process that's facilitated by our inner voice connected to our intuition, infinite intelligence, the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds working as one. Always remember this. All of creation is complete right now in the present moment, and thus in order for the mind to comprehend what the heart knows. The heart knows that all of creation is complete. The heart knows what you're destined to be because it knows you'll get there, because it exists. And the mind, the thinking mind, may be looking for reasons why or doubts or fears and any kind of overthinking or heavy in over-identifying with thoughts that disempower. And we want to release from that so we can connect and have the intuition working one with the mind and then as a result experience certainty. So the mind is in a way looking to catch up of understanding when it comes to the knowingness of the heart. And when they work together while in flow, we value the present moment. And what happens is Watch the video I did on this. Opportunities and resources reveal themselves. So if all of creation is complete, then the opportunities and resources are in front of you right now to create what you desire. And we decide upon them by choosing them to move forward. We can also refer to this as synchronicity, which is found in a state of being called harmony. So synchronicities is where we say meaningful coincidences occur and they may mean something to me and nothing to you. And maybe your synchronicities have a deep meaning to you, but not to others. And that's okay. That's all part of the inner voice conversation that helps with decisions. Because many of my decisions that have produced results have been based on experiencing synchronicities. And opportunities and resources stand out and they have meaning to me. Now, these elements contribute to a higher degree of decisiveness. Uncertainty brings us into higher levels of integration with parts that make up the whole, allowing the conscious mind to expand in understanding of the subconscious mind, which leads to decisiveness. So simply put, when we place ourselves in complex situations and we trust ourselves and we know that we are going to be able to find the answers within, and what we reveal on the journey is disempowering beliefs and we release them, we start to find decision via our inner voice. And then we have a higher degree of integration of the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the superconscious mind. And we understand, as mentioned earlier, we take things apart to put it back together. This is all one. All of creation is complete. Everything is one. And in the Kabbalion, we say everything is and isn't at the same time. So we take things apart to put it back together and see it all as one. And the uncertainty is really inability to see it all as one so we can see the pattern which is really the decision. So how do we integrate all these things? Well, you know, my favorite saying, one of my favorite sayings is how you do one thing is how you do everything. Consider integrating these in a broad spectrum of important areas of your life, mental, spiritual, physical, family, financial, personal, service to others. One thing we can do is step into the cave you fear to enter. A lot of times we don't know what we don't know. So when we step into and say, I don't know how I'm going to figure this out, but I'm going to do this thing that I'm afraid to do that is exciting. Anyways, it will reveal 
a lot of ability to you and you'll pick up understanding and see the synchronicities and the resources and opportunities after you step into the cave, which contribute to bringing forth what you desire. Another way is to evolve what shows up for you. As mentioned, a lot of this has to do with beliefs. And we go on this journey to identify beliefs. And most of our journey is really releasing disempowering beliefs. Now, there's going to be periods in our journey, as mentioned, it's important to consume information. However, we don't want to be overly consuming information to the point where we feel confusion. So evolve what shows up for you is really what are the beliefs that show up that we experience as in harmony or overly reacting in a negative way to whatever shows up in the outer world, people, environment, circumstance, and information, and cross-referencing it to the beliefs that we have. Now, this is something we could do with ourselves, or we could work with somebody who understands this. Number three, flow the emotions through you. See, one of the things that happens that causes us to get stuck is we identify with certain emotions and we hold on to them. One of the things we have to practice is letting go. Watch the discussion that I did on Letting Go by David Hawkins. Allow the emotions to release from you as they should. They are to be experienced and released. They're there for a reason. But one of the things we want to do is not identify with emotions that seem to cause us to feel what Neville speaks about, reactive to the world of Caesar. So allow them to naturally, from a healthy perspective, release them. If you don't release these emotions, we repress and suppress the emotions, and they express themselves in a lot of times an explosive or unhealthy way. Another thing we have to do, if we want to evolve to a higher degree of connection with our inner voice and decisiveness, is release past shame that we have about ourselves and others. See, much of reality is created from our past, or it's created from our vision or imagination, the future where we're destined to go. And shame has a tendency to recreate the past on the bridge of incidents. So we want to identify where we are shaming people, environment, circumstance, information, and ourselves in the past and evolve our beliefs about what happened in the past. One of my favorite is people always did the best they could, and I always did the best I could, based on my level of consciousness and based on their level of consciousness. Now, this belief is very empowering because it allows me to release from the past and assign empowering meaning to my past and move forward and be in a state of a higher degree of decisiveness because the lack of decisiveness is really a lot of times identification on past experiences and assuming that it plays a role in the current circumstances of the present. Now, that is a subconscious experience, indecisiveness as a result of identifying with shame from the past. Number five, really one of the simplest things that we can do, you've probably heard this said many times, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Take a step forward. When in doubt, ask yourself, what's the thing I can do right now? It may be related. It may be take a step back and meditate. The answers are always within you. There's always a decision. It may not be the answer to the key decision in question or the key factor that you need to make a decision on. But by releasing, as mentioned, the emotion or the tension, the stuck feeling, by just asking yourself, what can I do right now? What's the number one thing I can do right now? You will connect with your inner voice and receive that information. And perhaps you take a step forward, you identify the beliefs, you're able to shift perspective of what was holding you back from making the decision that you would like to have made, and you release that belief, and you're able to make that decision. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.